Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Lenten service. We welcome back Pastor Mark, who will be delivering the message tonight. And before we get started, he has a special announcement. Alan, you got a minute? Come on over here. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Earlier in the sanctuary, you, you've heard of bats in here. It was this little bird flew in here and landed on my shoulder while I was in here getting ready. This little bird whispered in my ear, it's Alan's birthday. It's Alan's birthday. And he told me how old you are, Alan. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and I promptly slapped him out of here. Well, I thought we could sing happy birthday to Alan. Wouldn't that be nice? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alan. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, we had a gift for you, but uh, Kevin wrecked it this morning on the roads. They were so icy. <laughs> so I, I can't do a thing about it now, but just say, happy birthday. You're welcome. <laughs> Please stand as we begin our worship. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And we begin with hymn number 561, Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please be seated for silent self-examination. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our reading this evening is from Isaiah chapter 43. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. The word of the Lord.
Well, it was uh, two Sundays ago that I stood in this pulpit at the 930 service and half choked to death, not being able to finish the sermon. And then some bright souls within our midst decided to go back to the sound group and see if they could rebroadcast at 1030 my 8 o'clock sermon. So not only could I not talk, but I had the indignity of watching myself preach backwards. I only have one thing to say. You have my deepest sympathies. <laughs> so I learned some things, though, from that, and it was a good experience. I learned I talked too fast, and I need to settle down that stuff a little bit to try to be a better communicator. Plus, it helps my throat. You know, as you read through Luther's catechism, through its explanation particularly of the Lord's Prayer, through each petition, it begins to sound like a gimme, like a no-brainer, like maybe we're throwing God slow pitches. Hallowed be thy name. Done. Thy kingdom come. In due time, Lord. Thy will be done. <laughs> Only naturally. I mean, there's not a curveball or a change up in the whole bunch. These prayers were answered before we, we even prayed them. But this last petition, deliver us from evil, strikes me as quite different. In answering this prayer, it almost seems like God struck out. I mean, let's be honest. The darkness of evil is running rampant. Evil's in the street, in the potential stranger who may threaten us or our families. It is wherever violence breaks out against children or, or women or grandparents. Evil is in the marketplace. It's a, it seeks to ensnare us in its addictive web to make us spend more and more and go deeper into debt. It is a foot in the city where the inner cores have deteriorated and death and violence is their common lot. Evil roams the countryside, pitting husband against wife, children against parents, neighbor against neighbor. The prevalence of evil is not lost on Scripture. As Jesus said, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. Paul likens the, the groans of evil to travail and says that the whole creation groans. Peter himself said, Do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening but rejoice if you participate in the sufferings of Christ. I dare say all of us on some level have suffered from the darkness of evil, and I would dare say many of us have prayed, deliver us from evil, and we've continued to suffer. What then is the meaning of this? I think the Greek gives us a partial explanation. Though we're used to saying deliver us from evil, that isn't exactly the best translation. In most manuscripts, there's an article before the word evil. What Jesus seemed to be teaching us is that we are to pray deliver us from the evil one. Hmm. Now it gets personal. In John 17, another of the Lord's prayers is recorded. Jesus prayed to the Father for all believers, all of us, when he said, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Now it's getting serious. The evil one is a, far, a foe far more terrible than death. The evil one doesn't just come to cause misery but comes to draw us from God. 
Were the evil one given free reign to tempt us, our strengths would be turned to weakness, our willpower would betray us, God himself would seem absent, and even our best insights, our best stuff, would be turned to darkness. Make no mistake, we're no match for the evil one, and you've probably found that out, probably the hard way. There may be some sins that you fall prey to with frightening regularity. You might wonder, does God even answer this prayer, deliver us from the evil one? Oh, you better believe he does. You better believe he does. Jesus made a comment during his earthly ministry that if you want to rob a strong man's house, what do you do? You tie up the strong man. And that's exactly what Jesus did. The evil one is the accuser. He will draw you from God. Much of his power comes uh, from the fact that he can, he can make his appeal to our sinfulness. His task is to lead us from God, and he's very good at it. The evil one, though, is the strong man. The earth is his house, but Jesus tied the evil one, limited his power, and robbed him. All who believe in the Son of God have been stolen from the evil one's kingdom. All who believe in the Son of God have been delivered from the evil one. All who believe in the Son of God have been protected from the evil one, even though we still suffer with the darkness all around us. Yes, the evil one still tempts us, but there's a gift God gave us that no one else in the world could give. Even the evil one couldn't give it. He might be able to pretend to, but he, he couldn't give it. And it's so commonplace, we're tempted to forget it. And that gift is forgiveness. And when Jesus died on the cross, and he gave us the gift of forgiveness, he bound, limited, and robbed the evil one of his power. Forgiveness is a gift of God alone, God's mercy overflowing and freeing us. You see, God knew that if it was left to us, it'd be all a disaster. But God knew that if he gave us forgiveness, the ability to return to God, there would be a chance to restore creation. For Martin Luther, praying the Lord's Prayer was nothing less but an act of spiritual warfare. I kid you not. That's what he called it, an act of spiritual warfare. Luther wrote, in the act of praying this prayer, devils are loosed. The powers that be rage against such a prayer. They can't stand to have one person running loose who is able to throw off the chains and pray, our Father, save us. Deliver us from the evil one. The evil one allied with our sinful natures would have us go it alone, pretending that we could somehow overcome and do so apart from God and God's grace. But this prayer alone causes us to throw ourselves on the mercy of God and God alone. This God who is more powerful than sin, death, and the devil, this God who we would ask to walk with us in our neighborhoods and in our city, in our nation and throughout the world to deliver us from the evil one's threats. This God who will grant us the grace to not be overcome by evil and the grace to overcome evil with good. In other words, this God who ever and will always lead us to follow Jesus as the way of God. I think we can agree that the path of destruction, the path of darkness is incredibly wide in our world. It seeks to sweep up all that is good and pervert it to the evil one's ways. And it seems that by contrast, the path of salvation is quite narrow. How narrow? I can answer that. It's about the width of a cross beam of a cross. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please stand as we continue with hymn number 744, Lord Be Glorified. seated.
Please stand as we continue with the gospel canticle and prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I wake, your presence will give me joy. Be our light in the darkness, O God, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we sing hymn number 565. All praise to thee, my God, this night. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life. And we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 and 10.30 for the traditional worship and 9.30 for the contemporary worship service. Our midweek Lenten service is Wednesday at 7.30. The fourth Sunday of each month at 1.30, we have our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio. No gift is too small and will help us with our goal of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.